Ladies and gentlemen, I am back. This is Pete Wall, and usually you would see me covering WWE news, and I will do some of that right here on the live stream, but I'm taking this opportunity to cover something that I'm also passionate about, and that is making my own alcohol, I'm doing wine. Later on this summer, I'll be making my own hobbyist still. So making moonshine, making whiskey, making bourbon, stuff like that. But tonight, tonight is all about the wine, for now anyway. Now we're going to get into other things very soon. And um, if you're watching, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of different ways that you can make wine. Now there is the, the challenging way, the long way. And that is basically taking raw fruits, fermenting them, and then adding your yeast, your sugars, and stuff like that, and then turn it into wine. There are different ways, though. There's the cheap way. You can go out and get your concentrated juice, 100% pure juice. It works fantastic if you want to you, uh, create alcohol on the cheap. Now, for this, all you need is bread yeast and sugar and your concentrated 100% fruit juice and you are set to go. Um, so I've got three different kinds of wines here I want to kind of uh, do a taste test. I have yet to taste them so I want to do that right here on a live stream. I want to get a little bit liquored up for you you know cut a little bit loose. I'm going to take off those glasses because they're glaring and they're giving me nothing but a headache today. So, I'm going to show you. I've got my apple pie wine. This is a, an experiment. And yes, I am using a recycled bottle. But, this is the first time I'm attempting an alcohol like pie one, wine. It's got a beautiful color, doesn't it, Red? It's, it's beautiful. I like the girls' night out, though. Well, see, you very greatly, so. <laughs> see, I recycle all bottles, and I needed some big ones, so I went over next door to my neighbors, and they always have wine. And this is my cranberry uh, raspberry wine that I created. These were done on the cheap, and I'll explain how you do that in a little bit. Now, it's not quite done settling, so it's a little bit of a darker color than what you would normally see in a wine. Um, but I'm going to taste it anyway today because it is done fermenting. And then one of my many great and successful attempts, this is a strawberry wine. I created this for my wife because she always wanted strawberry wine. This one right here is a challenging thing to do. You have to have the right size of fermenting bucket or you can end up with an explosion or a volcano of fermenting uh, strawberries. And yes, it does explode. It goes all over the fucking room if you are not careful. Um, as you can see, it's in a whiskey bottle. Like I said, I recycle everything if I can. Now, I'm going to start off with the apple pie wine because I am very curious as to the way it turned out. And give it a little... I don't know how, uh, how you got out for... Well, I guess you're from Canada. Alberta Premium, they banned that here. Oh, that's beautiful smell. Delicious, that, though. That almost smells like vodka mixed with apple juice. Beautiful. <laughs> now, I'm not a pussy. I... Now, I went and checked the alcohol content in each of these. And when you buy wine in a liquor store or out in the U.S. at the grocery store that you can, a wine is at tops, 15% alcohol. Mine, they range from 20 to 30 proof. Now, there are different ways to get it higher. I can now also get mine up to 100 proof without distilling and that is fractal distilling. And that is basically freezing it and then letting the alcohol strain from the ice and then uh, continuously doing this. And then you get your 100 proof wine. Now, this is, like I said, the. Fractal distilling. What was that? Very 
pretty informative. I didn't know that was called fractal dis- uh, distilling. Yep. Um, they're... I, um, they used to do that when I worked uh, with DOD. They would grab the NyQuil and yep. they freeze it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, I, I got into watching some videos this uh, this this past summer, um, and I wanted to start up my own hobby still, and I didn't want to jump into it not knowing what I was doing. So I wanted to start off making wines, and then this summer get into um, making uh, moonshine and bourbons and whiskey. Now I'm going to taste this before I answer Tim Blackmore's question on the page there. He's asking a wrestling-related content, uh, so I'll get to that in a second. Actually, Red, can you see his comment at all? Yeah, I see it. You go ahead and get your uh, wine ready. Oh, wow, that is fucking strong. Is it? Oh, fuck, but beautiful. It burns all the way down, man, like you're drinking whiskey. <laughs> uh, Tim Blackmore. Um, let's see. What about... Let's see. What about Undertaker as a GM or something like that? Um, I would have to say I would not want to see Undertaker as a GM in the WWE or in any promotion because it would take away from the character that is the Undertaker. Now, even the American badass version of the Undertaker would not be suited as a GM. Um, he, he's a little bit too of a on-the-nose kind of guy, you know, if you cross him, he's going to put a fist in your face, and to have that as a GM would not work, it would not go over well, and everyone knows, and everyone loves the dead man as the dead man, now having him in a suit, or, you know, any other kind of garb other than the Undertaker look, just would take away from what he's done in the wrestling business, um, now, we've seen him in the past kind of take wrestlers under their wings, or under his wing. Um, what was that guy from Australia? Uh, the big fucking dude? Nathan. Yes. Jones. Yes, Nathan Jones. We've he seen took, him. He took him, uh, from what I understand, he him in his backyard for like six months. Yeah. Now, I can see him doing stuff like that. Maybe even like introducing yeah, a I new... See, uh, I can't see him as a GM. I can see him as either an agent or as uh, at the performance um, center. Yeah, or, yeah, working in the performance center would be a good thing, too. Now, if they wanted to bring a new dark character in and kind of have him um, replace Undertaker, which would be hard to do, but they could also have Undertaker kind of like his... Uh, not manager, I would say his master, you know? I could see something like that. But as GM, I don't think it's possible. Um, you can go on further with this red a little bit. I'm going to finish this up because, damn, it fucking tastes good. Yeah, no, he also asked him what happened to the hardcore things. And my opinion is, wow. the 90s were hardcore. Look at Nirvana. Look at Godsmack. You know, all different genres in the 90s were all hardcore. Everything was. From music to politics to the President of the United States of America <clears throat> and his intern. <laughs> Everything was hardcore. So, it's just, it changes with the times. If you want hardcore, you can go watch CZW, but at the same time, you know, they're trying to outlaw it in Delaware, and I don't know where they'd go after that because they already outlawed it all in Philadelphia, so... Well, I'm, death, you know, just, it's hard to make that happen anywhere now. Yeah, it is. Now, I just poured myself some of this uh, cranberry raspberry wine. Like I said, it needs to sit a little bit longer. It's not clear enough yet. I like my wine nice and clear. You can use clearing agents for this. Not uh, the way I like yeah, to roll. I don't, I don't recommend those. They always, that's what you get when you get like the barefoot wine and you get the aftertaste. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Then why don't they use Undertaker as a person that the wrestlers go to before the GM like they did in the past? Well, he had to pass the torch on. So there's going to be a new locker room, um, basically a locker room, uh, what is it that they call him? Leader. That is a judge. Yes, he was, he was the judge. 
But um, there's going to be a new one doing it. Someone that's been there almost as long as Undertaker. Someone that's proven loyal and uh, trustworthy. But uh, his days in the locker room, like he, he's not going to be traveling with WWE anymore. Unless they propose something to him that's going to, you know, basically an offer he can't refuse. You know, that type of scenario. But he'll never be in the ring again. And he'll never be, like... Automatically, if he's in the arena, he's the leader of the the locker room. There's no ifs, ends, or buts about that. But um, other than that, though, I don't see him traveling with WWE anymore, if at all. Oh, this cranberry shit is fucking awesome. Mm, a little bit too sweet. Still strong alcohol. But beautiful in the end. I think it's something my wife would like drinking. I'm not into the whole sweet stuff. Being a diabetic and all, but uh, I mean, like, other than that, though, the taste is awesome, and uh, the alcohol content is there kicking me in the, in the back of the throat. Man, I wish you could be here sharing this with me, buddy. You still there? And I think we lost Red Rainer. Seems to be that way anyway. Um, but anyway, um, I'll probably see him in the comments. Uh, Red, you still there or not? If you are, please post on the chat. Um, now, this stuff, like I said, a little bit on the sweet side. It could have probably fermented even longer. Um, but uh, other than that, not pad. Let's see what happened to the hardcore thing. They're not going to have hardcore wrestling in the PG era. Um, it's too violent for what they want. Now, we've seen shades of some hardcore stuff coming back. We've seen Alexa Bliss use a kendo stick. In NXT, we've seen a cage match that they actually shed a little bit of blood in. So that was a little bit of a surprise. It was good to see. But the days of... The massive chair headshots and um, the hardcore matches. I think there's still many years to come before we get back into that era. Um, it, it's, it's just a thing that they're doing to appease media and parents. Because wrestling has been blamed for a lot of deaths in the past. And a lot of injuries at home. And so they want to veer away from that. So that way they don't keep on getting that bad criticism and being blamed and being brought to court. So, yeah, don't count on seeing hardcore matches in a long time. The most they'll do is a street fight and it'll basically stay in the ring or ringside area. Nothing else. And I said, a little bit too sweet for me, but uh, still enjoying it. Will Jim Leahy be mayor of Sunnyvale? <laughs> You and your trailer park boys bullshit, man. I, I'm so. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 the, I'm, not, I'm not making hash and fucking, you know, paving my driveway yeah, with Ray it. Only, Ray used to make wine and liquor. That was oh. Ray's, Ray's good wine or Ray's good liquor. <laughs> no, I'm. Uh, the stuff is actually pretty strong. You get a buzz pretty quick from it, and I have only had a little bit. So, but I'm not a heavy drinker anymore either. So there you go. Um, now, one last one. It says Alberta Premium on the bottle. Strawberry wine on the inside. Beautiful fucking shit, man. It smells fantastic. This one I'm having a little bit more of. If I'm going to drink, I might as well drink up good, right? Um... Now, Tim, what's the fascination with Undertaker being GM or um, or back in the locker room for some reason? Like, you seem like kind of passionate that you want Undertaker back. And I'm one of those. I, I love Undertaker. But um, all in all, it, his time has come and gone. And if you watched his last match, he had such a huge issue just walking to the ring. Uh, what old wrestlers are making a comeback? What happened to Paige? Paige keeps on fucking around. Um, and it doesn't help she's married to Alberto Del Rio right now, or otherwise known as Alberto El Patron. Um, 
Now, he's been voicing his opinions on WWE do, uh, during Twitter feeds and, um, what's that, Telescope or Periscope? And um, just been basically slandering WWE, saying what his thoughts are on them. And Paige is right there beside him while he's doing it. Plus, she's failing uh, drug tests or not handing in her drug test uh, results. And uh, so they really don't know what to do with Paige anymore. They are on a very big, um, I don't know, a big watch on what she's going to do if she's going to improve her attitude. The biggest thing that I've heard, Pete, is that um, she's been backstage with her, with Alberto Del Rio at all the indie shows. That too. And they're saying that she may be in breach of contract, but The Rock's making that movie, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. Yeah. Well, see, right now, they don't want to fire her because of that movie that's being made by The Rock and his uh, his production company. But, um, all in all, she's um, she basically just kind of let everything go. It's sad to see, because when she first came into WWE, she was only 19 years old, so clearly she wasn't ready for the fame that, she, that was going to come her way. And it's kind of um, dealt some personal blows her way because of her actions outside of the ring. Um, we all know, I don't know if you know Tim, but she was involved in a sex tape uh, being released in, in, on the internet with uh, Xavier Woods. And um, How huh. can anybody not know that, though? Well, if who's... You're a wrestling fan, it's everywhere. Yeah. It is everywhere, but some people just don't check out the media that uh, is about wrestling, you know? That's why I wanted to start doing this, bring it to people that aren't watching the news on wrestling and stuff, so... Now, um, now, okay, this wine right here, this is strawberry wine. I used 23 pounds of strawberries. And... 18 pounds of sugar, yeast nutrient, and um, yeast itself. And just regular bread yeast. I don't go out of my way to get wine yeast. It's not not something I'm going to go and shill out extra money for. And right as it sits, it's sitting at 28% alcohol. I had to back sweeten it, and if you don't know what back sweetening is, you have to add sugar after it's done fermenting because the yeast has eaten up all the sugar in the in the fermenting bucket. Um, now I made ten gallons of this stuff because my wife really wanted to have it, so I made it for her. Um, she's already tried it, so today's going to be my first taste test. Pete's good liquor. Wow, nothing but strawberry taste, man. Beautiful smell, not too sweet, just perfect. A lot of alcohol content, like I said, 28%. Gotta love that shit. No, I, I don't know why I really got into wine. What was that? He made it for his wife, folks. I did. <laughs> uh-huh. No, I, I, uh, what I made for myself, I went and grabbed, um, was it 50 lemons, about 100 lime, um, six pineapple and apples and oranges and grapefruit. And I mix that all in together. I call it my citrus blast. And, um, I'm, I turned that into wine, which is very hard to do because the, um, the acid in the lemons and, and the citrus itself is very hard to ferment. So you have to be very careful how you go about it. But, uh, that shit knocks you on your ass. I had my uncle, I hadn't seen him in 15 years. And he come down and he asked me if he could drink with me and try out my wine. And I had that some bitch sitting on his ass, not for, uh, well, after the fifth glass. He was, uh, he was done. So I make sure my wine isn't the shit you buy in the store. It's going to treat you like alcohol should and it's going to kick you in the ass. No, but I, I really don't know why I got into it. Um, I... I wanted to get into uh, whiskey making and stuff like that, make my own, uh, make my own moonshine and stuff. But I wanted to make sure I knew the concepts of fermentation, and then just pop my head. Well, I can make wine. Start with that, and then move into the bigger stuff. So this summer I'm going to go into the bigger stuff, um, 
And, you know, if the zombie apocalypse ever happens, I got my own booze in the basement. I don't have to worry. I, I can go on a drinking binge, and you fuckers are going to have to fucking uh, go straight. <laughs> so, that's my fucking opinion right there. Is there going to be a zombie apocalypse? I don't know, but I'll have the wine and the fucking booze to keep me tipsy long enough for... Uh, fish. I know how to fish. That's about it. Oh, I know how to fish too, man. Well, I, I used to, growing up, you know, catch like 40, 50,000 pounds at a time. I'd keep a village going for a while, I think. Yeah. Just with fish. Actually, uh, Tim Blackmore, uh, he's from the town I'm living in right now, Woodstock, and... Uh, I, you call your wine Woodstock wine? No, no, no. I don't have a name for my wine, except for the Citrus Blast I made. That's it. Gotcha. Yeah, I used to be a Hollywood Hulk Hogan fan. Then I went to Stone Cold and then went to Undertaker. That is why all my favorite wrestlers are leaving. <laughs> um, actually, no. Stone Cold um, retired because of injuries. And Hollywood Hogan because he's just too fucking old. And he can't wrestle with shit. Undertaker. He his knee replaced and his hips. Yeah. So Hogan can't wrestle. Undertaker needed hip surgery as well. He had to get a whole hip uh, replacement as well. And uh, Stone Cold has had so many problems with his knees over the years that he just can't get in the ring anymore. So he it, had his neck. Owen dropped him on his neck that one time. Yeah. And, and the sad thing is, in this day and age, you'd think that there'd be talented wrestlers out there that could compete with what these guys from the Attitude Era did. It's not their fault they're booked bad. No, it's not their fault that they're booked bad, but... I mean, that WWE doesn't see the potential in some of these guys is pretty ridiculous. I just, I don't know how I feel about it, to be honest with you. Yeah. Like, I was all, I'm, I'm in the same boat he was, except I never went Undertaker. I went Hogan, Stone Cold, Foley, and then I went um, CM Punk. See, as, as far as I... As far as I can remember, I've always been a Hogan hater. I've never liked his style really? of wrestling. I've never liked him. I didn't mind when he pulled the heel bit when he went NWO. I didn't mind that. It was a different side that's of him. Saying, like, that's when I liked yeah. him. I didn't like him before that. But his, his wrestling style didn't change, which I hoped. You know, and, and seeing him in the movies do power bombs and stuff like that, you'd think, well, you know, why can't you implement that in your matches? If you can do a power bomb in a movie... Why can't you do it in the ring, you know? I never want to hurt his back. And yeah. he hurt his legs by jumping on them all the time. Uh, he could have been less of a pussy. I know. I understand where you're coming from completely. It's just... I gotta say the strawberry... the old days. What's that? I gotta say the strawberry is my favorite. It's got the most, uh... The most flavor. Like there I said... Go. Fuck, man. I wish I could, uh, share this over, over uh, with you, but... You'd enjoy it. There's this law about alcohol and importing into countries and things. Yeah. Now, um, before I get too far, I want to make sure I do something I should have done at the top of the show. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com backslash pillar to post. Now, they have over 180,000 different titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. So, if you uh, you like to read but don't have the time and you do a lot of driving or you want to listen to someone read to you while you're exercising, it is a great opportunity. Take advantage of uh, my sponsor's little uh, gift to you, a free audiobook plus 30-day free trial of their services. Check it out, people. And also, I want to plug... Sorry for um, kind of cutting you off there, um, Red. But I want to take the time to plug my book. I'm pulling in Mick Foley here. Dragon's Kin, book one in the Circle of Steel Chronicles. You can find this on Amazon.com.ca or dot wherever the hell you live. Now, it is fantasy fiction. It was written by me, Pete Wall, as it says right there on the cover. And um, 
I'm going to actually read the, the back and give you a little bit idea of what the book's about. Now, a chance meeting with a mysterious woman brings danger and death into a young apprentice's life. Solon now has a decision to make. Help the beautiful woman and escape with their lives or turn his back on the would-be thief. Making the right decision can sometimes open new doors. Some of these doors hold secrets unimaginable. For Solon and Nora, their chance meeting unlocks the doors of ancient prophecy. This particular prophecy th uh, thrusts these two new companions on a quest to save the lands of Ashkar and all its inhabitants. This is the prophecy of the Dragon King and his Circle of Steel Chronicles. Um, now, I had this published by, um, what is it, Create, createspace.com, I think it's called. Damn it, can't fucking remember. But like I said, it's in on Amazon right now. You can buy it or you can purchase directly from me. And when you purchase directly from me, you automatically get a signed copy. Um, I also started a merchandise line directly related to the book to help promotions and I am wearing one of those t-shirts right now and it is the Circle of Steel brand. This is the ice blue version of the design that uh, is for Circle of Steel and there is 15 other designs to choose from. You can find those on teespring.com as well as order directly from me. Um, now uh, Tim Blackmore is asking, do you know any of the wrestlers that have been off or making a comeback? Uh, Rusev is off right now. No one's really clear what's going on. He, um, he basically threatened Shane McMahon on SmackDown that if he didn't get a title shot, he was going back to Bulgaria. And we haven't seen him for two weeks since that happened. Um, I actually did a, a video earlier on talking about this very issue um, now either they don't have any creative ideas for them or or like uh, like I said earlier they gave Jinder Mahal the storyline that they were going to use for Rusev early on and that's make Rusev the champion instead of Jinder Mahal um, let's see we've got Braun Strowman on injury he won't be back till I think it's, they said June July um, so he just had elbow surgery, repairing his damaged elbow. He'll be back stronger than ever and guarantees coming back. He's going to take out Reigns and then challenge Brock Lesnar. I think that's the end goal there. Um, who else do we have on the injured list right now? The New Day. The New Day, yes. Kofi, um, Kofi Kingston. Yeah, Kofi Kingston's out on injury. They're waiting for him to be ready. June 12th, and he'll be back. Enzo Amori, I think. Oh, yeah? That's what you're thinking? Yep. I got a lot of people saying they're hoping that it was Big Cass. <laughs> well, no. I think that'll be the end of Enzo because I don't see him as a singles character. No. I, I see him as a mouthpiece, as someone's manager at best. You know? He can talk, though. Yes, he can talk. That's why I said a manager manager type role would be more suited to him because his wrestling skills are lacking big time. His name is Enzo Amore. Drinking wine and talking wrestling. That's a twist. Woo! Ah, here we go. Tasted all three. They all taste good. Love it. I can't wait till I can start showing people my bourbons and my cognac and shit. <laughs> Uh, just seen the New Day talking on Smack Talk. Yes, they were recently on Talking Smack. Um, I didn't catch the episode. I did watch it on uh, YouTube. And um, like I said, they look like they're ready to make their comeback. And uh, you said June 12th, I believe, right? Yeah, that's what I had heard. Um, I don't remember where. I read it in an article today. Um, Zack Ryder's also out on injury. I have no clear idea when he's returning either. Um, but then he is... He may be on Raw now. Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, they want, they separated him and, uh, and Raleigh. I like him. 
I'm not a fan yet. I want to see him a little bit more in action before I make a better point of view of what he actually is to well, me. Well, he had the Maryland flag on him, and I'm from Maryland, so I'm just kind of biased. Oh, uh, okay, so you're just sucking dick for the sake of sucking dick. <laughs> no, 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 no. He got over at WrestleMania before uh, all that stuff happened with him and that guy. Yeah. Yeah, Ron, uh, Rob Gronkowski. Sure. That guy, I don't watch American football. So. I don't watch football at all. It is fucking hot in my fucking laundry room tonight. I gotta open up a fucking window here. Holy mother fucking sweaty ball sack. <laughs> Um, but, um, let's see what else is going on. Still the big war of the broken universe going on on Twitter. I covered all that today. Even Billy Corgan has gotten involved trying to mediate it and was unsuccessful. Uh, we have seen Mr. H and his wife since WrestleMania. Oh, um... I kind of like that we haven't really seen Stephanie McMahon on television. I like what Kurt Angle's doing on Raw. I'd like to keep Stephanie away from that because, you know, it, it's going to turn into another scenario like Mick Foley and her. I really don't want to see that. Triple H is doing better off television than he is on because he's taking care of NXT right now. And if you are a fan of NXT, there is a reason why you like what you see because it's more about the wrestling than it is about the entertainment value. It isn't all about um, the crap that's going on that's not important to us. It's in-your-face wrestling. Um, Aleister Black right now, very hot commodity on NXT. And the more we see of him, the more that I'm liking him and loving what he's doing. I'm just waiting to see him in a better match. Tonight was also the Velveteen Dreams debut on NXT. Um, quite impressive. The guy can fly in the ring, that's for damn sure. Uh, but he reminds me a lot of or Orlando Jordan, if you remember who that is. Yep. Dresses a lot like him, has his hairstyle like Orlando Jordan. Very similar character based. Um, and then we had Drew McIntyre versus... Um, Blake, Wesley Blake, which was a pretty impressive match. And I'm always impressed to see the new style, the new um, the new look and the new attitude of Drew McIntyre. He is an impressive powerhouse. And I can't wait to see him as the NXT champion. And then maybe later on down the road on the main roster. Heard it when he was... Drew Galloway? Galloway. Yes. Yeah, but then, you know, they're going to, well, we already have a Gallows, and it's too close to Gallows' name, then, nah, we can't have that, you know? Oh, I just say, fuck that, let him be Galloway, the guy's fucking awesome. Daniel Bryan have his baby? Yes, he did. They had a little girl, and they named her Birdie. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella. Um, it's, it's an old English name, but to me, it's just... It's one of those names that you name a child that it's like, okay, I don't care if she gets beat up growing up, you know? Kid, poor girl's going to be picked on her whole fucking life. See, I, don't, I, I wish we had more listeners like this that are actually tuning in and asking questions. We rarely get that, and I, I like that. I'm hoping we see more people on tomorrow at 8 p.m. To, uh, tomorrow night for our show. I haven't told you this yet, um, Red. Are you still there? Mr. Red. Red Rainer. Maybe I lost him. Or he went for a piss break. Either one. Um, but there is going to be a special guest host tomorrow night on Shooting from the Hip. Yeah, he is basically retired. WWE will not let Daniel Bryan wrestle anymore because of the concussions he's suffered in the ring. Um, now, he's been cleared by multiple doctors saying that he is able to wrestle, but um, WWE still won't allow it. Now, there is a lot of speculation rumor that he will be wrestling after his contract expires with WWE. So he'll probably be moving, be moving back to the indies where he became famous in the first place. 
but um, that's only speculation from that for now. It's a lot of rumors going about about him, but um, all in all, it's very unclear exactly where he's going to end up. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I miss him in the ring. The guy is phenomenal when it comes to in ring action, and um, he was the last the last one that would have been able to replace John Cena's. Um, you know, role in WWE. He would have been the next face of the WWE if he wouldn't have been injured as he was. Um, it's sad that uh, he was, but, um, you know, shit happens in that ring. Many accidents can happen. But, um, oh, geez. Loosen up a little bit here. Um, what was I going to talk about? Hell, I can't fucking remember. Um, but moving on. Um, yeah, like I said, there's many different ways you can make your own wine. Johnny Boy is working on a movie right now um, and taking some much needed time off to heal and everything. But yeah, he's shooting movies right now and uh, he's supposed to be back, I believe, by SummerSlam, if I heard correctly. I'm not quite sure about that. I will make sure I check into it and get back to you on it. Um, like I said, any questions that you have, always ask in the, in the chats. Um, now, I do live streams from Monday to Wednesday, and that's usually covering Monday Night Raw, SmackDown on Tuesday, and NXT on Wednesdays. And today is just a little bit something different. I wanted to talk about other things I, I do as well. And uh, promote my book as well as my merchandise line. Uh, which there's baseball caps coming with this design on them. Um, it's going to be coming in red and blue. And um, also beanies, uh, toques, um, ball caps like I said. Um, there's hoodies. Um, what else is there? There's something else. I just can't quite remember it right now. There's going to be coffee mugs coming as well. Uh, is John going to an, be another rock? Um, he's basically already another rock, but um, um, he, he's he's more hesitant on leaving the wrestling industry as the rock was. Rock kind of just up and went. Uh, he made a few comeback appearances, and he still does occasionally. But John Cena wants to, for now, be a recurring uh, athlete maybe more part-time than full-time but he wants to have both his feet in both doors in the in Hollywood as well as in wrestling and I gotta admire him for it because he's been making sure he takes care of himself a little bit better since he got into the movies um, but uh, he's also been switching up his uh, move sets as well so it's good to see um, what else can we discuss because um, Let's see what time. Well, we've only been going for 38 minutes. And... I'm not even drunk yet. And I haven't been drinking anymore either. Maybe I should pour myself another glass. Now, I had some friends believe that this was actual whiskey because it does, if you look at the bottle, it does look like you've got Alberta Premium in the bottle here, but... Um, very good stuff. I don't mind it at all. Um, let's see. What else is there to talk about? Um, nothing much really. Nothing much is really going on as of late. Now we've got uh, Extreme Rules coming up in two weeks. Not too much has been built up yet in storyline wise when it comes to Extreme Rules. Um... They've got the, um, what is it? The kendo stick on a pole match between Alexa Bliss and, uh, who's that chick? Um, Bailey, uh, for Raw. Now, my thoughts on the whole kendo stick on a pole match is completely retarded. I, I've never understood the whole, put an object on a pole match. The person who grabs the object is obviously the winner. But usually the person that grabs the object never gets to use it. It's the, their opponent, the loser of the match, that actually gets into it. 
Who's better in movies, John or The Rock? Um, the Rock has had a lot more successful movies. He's right now billed as the uh, most paid actor in Hollywood, or the highest paid actor in Hollywood. I think The Rock has gotten better roles since leaving the whole wrestling industry, Oh, uh, you know, just walking away from it almost completely. John will get some of those roles after he does the same. But yeah, The Rock has been in a lot better movies than John Cena has. It's it's not really um, either, like, it's not really John Cena's fault. Um, I think their acting skills, I think The Rock has uh, is a little bit better now than when he first got into the business. John Cena still has a little bit more to go. And he'll probably be getting the same roles as uh, The Rock later on in his life. But um, as long as he's staying so close to the WWE, John Cena won't go to get those huge roles that The Rock is getting right now. Not a chance. No. Um, let's see. What else can we go on about before I get off? Um, what is John's new movie about? I think it's a sniper movie. Yes, it's called The Wall. Um, he... I, I'm not, I've seen a few of the uh, trailers for it and they don't really show much of what's gonna, what the movie's about. It looks like uh, John Cena gets trapped in the middle of uh, the desert and with a partner and he's kind of like in the crosshairs of his, another sniper. So right now that's all I can really tell his part in the whole movie is just basically laying in the, uh, in, in, in the desert sands. And, uh, so if that's all the trailer showing, that's all I know that know about when it comes to that movie. But yeah, it's called the wall. I'm not sure when it's coming out. Um, but, uh, you know, it looks pretty good. Who do you think is going to make the leap to the movies? Um, well, from this new batch of wrestlers. Well, you got the Miz doing nothing but the Marine, um, and that last one really sucked. I couldn't even stay awake through the damn thing. That was so goddamn boring and so poorly shot. And they had multiple wrestlers in there. They had um, Bo Dallas in there. They had Naomi. They had uh, Mrs. Wife, Maurice, and a few other superstars in there. And it was boring as hell. The, the whole video of it was just really badly done. Uh, anyone else that I can see going into the movies? Um, you know, it's really hard to tell with this new batch of superstars. It, it's none of them really have the charisma on the camera like like the uh, '90s wrestlers did. What is going on with the Big Show? Um, the Big Show is getting in fantastic fucking shape. He's lost, I think they said around a hundred and. 100 plus pounds. The guy actually has a six pack, which is phenomenal for his size and for the shape he used to be in. Um, he's, I believe, is going to be doing some more movies. Um, if you've watched any of his movies, I think my favorite was Knucklehead. Um, a good comedy with him where he becomes a fighter. He's kind of a slow-witted character, and he becomes a fighter. That was a pretty damn good movie. He also did one with Dean Cain where they are, where he's a, a murderer, which was pretty brutal. Um, that one, he punched a woman's face until it was basically mush. That was different. I love seeing that side of him in the movies. I don't know what he's working on yet when it comes to movies, but I'll look into it and maybe uh, have that on one of my other reports. My cigarette keeps on going out. I should maybe just have Tim on Facebook uh, call. Be able to ask all these questions live. Let me get into Facebook. Unless you're a little bit afraid to go on air there, uh, Tim. Wasn't he the boogeyman? Um, no, I don't believe so. Was, are you talking about Boogeyman the Wrestler? No, that was a total different character. And um, if you're talking about Boogeyman the Movie, no, I don't believe so at all. 
Um, let's see. Is, who's all here? Sorry for the pause here a little bit. Um, Facebook's being a little bit of a dick. Here we go. What do we got here? What do we got over here? Uh, Red called me, but I wasn't online. He probably got disconnected. How about we give Red a call back? He is my co-host every Thursday night, and I'm trying to do a little bit of a longer stream tonight. I don't know why. just feel like it. Talk about random shit, wrestling-related, life-related. I don't care. Mr. Red Rainer, pick up the goddamn phone, you son of a bitch. And he's live. How's it going, Red? I can hear you, sir. Well, it says he's live, but I cannot hear a damn thing out of Red Rainer. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. Sorry, I must have my mic muted. I'm not sure which one goes which way, but I couldn't hear you before. Oh, okay. Um, no, I, I figured we got disconnected or something. Oh, Boogeyman the movie? No, I don't believe Big Show played the Boogeyman in the movie. I'm, I'm not sure, though. I can't say for sure. Um, what, now, there was three Boogeyman movies. Uh, which one are we talking about? Because I remember all three of them, and I don't remember some big dude playing the Boogeyman. seen any of them. No? Honestly. I, I love the original. The original was pretty good. Um, let's see. Tim's over here too. You know, I'm going to the wrong thing. Um, any kind of news you want to talk about there, Red? Not really, other than Next thing on television, even though they're getting over. Yeah. So, just kind of upset about that. Now, do you mind if we connect someone else in this call? Sure, it's fine. I've got to see how to do that first. You can't do that on uh, Facebook, but have to use Skype. Really? You used to be able to. You can't anymore. Oh, that's fucking bullshit. You used to be able to add people in different chats and uh, different calls. Who do you think should go into the Hall of Fame next? Um, I think. You know what? Randy Savage should have been put in there a long time ago. Same with Owen Hart. Um, Randy's in there. Is oh, he? No, I don't believe so. I thought he went in. He Ch died. China should have gone in it a long time ago. When it comes to women's wrestling, she is the one that changed the look of the women's wrestling in WWE. Yeah. Um, plus, first woman to ever hold the Intercontinental title. You know, uh, let's see, who else was there? Legion of Doom should be in there. Oh, Savage is in? Okay, so, okay, so if Savage yeah. is in, I take that back. I don't believe Owen yeah. Hart is in yet, is he? Owen Hart is in. Family sued them, and yeah. they don't want to be a part of it. They don't want his name in it. Yeah. Not be put in because the hearts don't want it. I I still think that uh, you know there should be some something said to say basically you know he should be in here, but you know sadly we can't allow it or whatever. Um, at least give him that much respect. Um, who else do we have that should go in? Um, there's so many of the old timers. Yeah. Yes, Undertaker should be in next year as well. I believe so. Um, also, they need to just add the entire Anaki family. <laughs> you might as well. They all become famous as shit. Yep. Um, let's... You know who I really am not really happy that's in there? Who's that? Donald Trump. Yeah, that doesn't really make much sense why they're put. Why they decide to. Uh, 
to put uh, the stars in there. Um, no, the Killer Bees are not in the Hall of Fame, and that is a tag team that I believe that should be in there. Jumping Jim Brunzel and, um, what's his name, Ganya. Um, Greg Ganya. Greg. No. Is that son? It is, uh, what's his name? What's his dad's name? Yeah, Vern Ganya's son, yes. It's uh, Greg Ganya and Jumping Jim Brunzel. They were the Killer Bees. Fantastic team. Um, Legion of Doom should be in there as well, in my opinion. Or are they? Nope. No? Wait. Paul, maybe. Yes, the Bulldogs, I believe, should be in there as well. They are one of the greatest uh, tag teams. I'm not with the Bulldogs on this. You can suck my rod, buddy. They weren't over enough to be in there. Actually, if you go back to the uh, late 80s, I mean, uh, yeah, I know. the they 80s, were they were big time over. Not just in Canada, in the U.S. as well. They were over big time. Dynamite Kid, uh, even if the Bulldogs weren't, Dynamite Kid should be in the Hall of Fame. For everything he's done in the wrestling world, that guy should be in. Yes, Demolition should be in as well, but uh, they are suing WWE right now with that concussion lawsuit. That is why they had New Day beat their um, their title reign victory. So they won't be put in for a very long time, you know, or if at all. So, Are we going to do a call on Skype? Um, right now, I don't have Skype up. I don't want to go through the hassle of it. And I haven't, I haven't really given people out my, uh, my, um, my Skype name yet so they can contact me. I'll have to make sure I start adding it to the description below and then start using Skype once again for these, uh, these videos. Now I'm still having issues. I still can't capture anything, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, capturing windows like Skype or even video games online. I can't capture anything. Really, I don't know what the fuck's going on, and I was hoping to have it fixed before our show tomorrow, but it doesn't look like I will. The Great Khali suck balls, man. Please, he does not deserve a Hall of Fame induction. Um, the guy couldn't wrestle for one. He could barely walk down to the ring for two. Near the end of his career, he was holding on to the damn ropes the entire match. Oh, he was worse than Andre the Giant at, at the end of Andre the Giant's career. You know? So, no. Great Khali, no. Does not deserve an induction. Not even just to be nice to the guy. Um, WWE... Yeah, his, yeah, yeah, WWE just let his contract run out. He's back in India and enjoying life out there. I guess he's... Uh, He's still a pretty big name out there. He usually so got... That he, made, he made enough rupees to live his entire life three times over. Probably. Because, I don't know if you know this or not, you can get a... Uh, everything's cheaper in India. Yes. One or another. So... No, but... Um... Yeah, Braun Strowman is your new giant in the WWE, and he's proven to be a value, a valuable commodity in uh, on Raw. So, yeah, I got a question about that. What's that? Did you notice that he got his right arm was uh, in the sling, and his right arm went against the the post and everything else, but they operated on his left arm. Yeah, I didn't really pay much attention to that part. But it's usually the case. They don't want to damage the already damaged body part. Who do you think is a good tag team now? Um, the, 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 the he loves the fashion police. Fuck you, man. The Revival is, I believe, the best tag team we have going. The most legitimate tag team we have right now in WWE is the Revival. And what I like yep. about them is they are a good throwback. If you remember... Back in the day, Arn Anderson and his brother Ole Anderson, the uh, Minnesota Wrecking Crew. These guys are a good throwback and a good comparison to the Arn Anderson or the Anderson brothers. Um, they're, I think they're comparable to the Enforcers. That as well. That as well. Like that's what I like. They are a good throwback. And um, DIY was another team I like, but they just split up at NXT Takeover. Uh, who else is there? Um, the Hardys. 
Yes, the Hardys. Um, I want to say that uh, American Alpha could be a great tag team. I think they got to find themselves a little bit first. They've got the wrestling skills for it. They've got the um, they've got the look I think for it. The new um, world's greatest tag team. Yes, I, I I actually would like to see uh, Kurt Angle take them under his wing and make them into a better team. They would be a great tag team under the tutelage of uh, Kurt Angle. You know, Pete, uh, I see Tim asked you another question. Oh, do you think you the Dudley Boys... The Dudley Boys are coming back? No. Just, they have started a wrestling school all over the country. They Basically, they do one class a month, and it's in all these different cities. So I think they have eight or nine different cities they're going to. They're just driving... Devon lives in Florida, and Bubba lives up in New York still. Yeah, Devon so went back and forth, driving to each other's house and doing these shows with each other. Devon still works for the WWE, but he is retired from in-ring action. Um, yep. And uh, Bubba Ray, or uh, what do they call Bully Ray, is working for Ring of Honor right now. Um, and like I, like I, uh, Red just said, they do train. They do uh, train uh, students. Um, actually, uh, one of their students is coming into um, NXT very soon. She's a woman. She, they're going to be using her as a referee. For, oh, there you go. Yeah, so that's one of their students. And she'll start off a, as a, res, uh, a referee, but uh, might be changing into a, um, a wrestler down the line. But I think they're using her for the May Young Classic uh, Women's Tournament coming up this summer. Should have been in there. Champion for how many years? Yeah, well, May, take nothing away from May Young. May Young had a wonderful career in the WWE and women's wrestling in general. So you can't really take nothing away from her, but Mula was the more well known women's wrestler and champion. And guaranteed later on down the road, they will have a fabulous Mula tournament or what have you. Um, let's see what else. Um, anyone else watching that has have has any question? I know we've got three viewers right now. I, I really wish it would say who was uh, on. I wanted to give a shout out to those who are watching. Um, and to those who are watching later on, thank you for tuning in. Always, if you are not a subscriber of Pillar to Post, hit subscribe. Keep on following the show. Help the show grow. Um, share the link out as well as... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook. I have my Facebook Pillar to Post page, my author page. Uh, you can always friend request me. I accept all friend requests because it just helps me grow the channel that much more. Also, you can find me on Twitter. I will be starting to use Twitter a lot more. I've been using it a little bit more frequently the last couple of days. Um, and, you know, all the other media outlets I use. So it's all in the uh, list below in the description below so check it out make sure you continue to follow um, now we should probably talk about what we're doing last night I was gonna bring this up uh, to you earlier but you went dead on the phone um, I have a yeah, little I, just, I, couldn't hear, I couldn't hear you at all I guess but maybe I lost connection I have I, I, was connected, though, so. I have um, a little surprise for you I hope it's not Vince Russo. No, um, it is a good friend of mine. He's going to be uh, filling in for me tomorrow. Alright. He's a little bit of an odd character. Should I hold off on my... Uh, no, 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 no. He He's yeah, there for a reason. He's there for a reason. Uh, when he heard I was doing the uh, Fantasy Wrestling League with you, he wanted to be a part of it. So he's my general manager. Oh God! <laughs> you know my general manager is uh, Paul Heyman. Well, he's basically the he, he's going to be the voice of uh, my brand. I'm going to let him handle the uh, the week to week shows. I'll be preparing them, but he's going to be the voice of. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, brand? We each have a brand. Smackdown and Raw, right? Yep. And we're basically going to prove that 
anyone can do better TV or booking, I should say, than what WWE is providing right now. So Red is going to be on tomorrow uh, cutting his show that he would do if he was in control of Monday Night Raw. Oh my God. You know something? I was just sitting here thinking, you kind of look like the missing link right now, man. Yeah, I got to... Like it. I gotta get rid of uh, my hair. I gotta shave it off. I gotta do something with my beard again. But, um, yeah, probably shave it off tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, um, I know him as Sin. Um, but people on Facebook know him as something else. And he does love to torture people. So if he gets a little bit rude or um, condescending. You know, just uh, bear with it a little bit. He, uh, he used oh, I'm to... sorry, but I might shoot back, you know. Oh, you can shoot back. He enjoys the shoots. Uh... But he will let you take care of your show the proper way. He won't get involved when you're doing your promos and stuff like that. So make sure, you know, I already informed him. He's got to let you do your shit. Who do you want to see come back? Who would I want to see come back? Rob Van Dam. I, I do like Rob Van Dam, but he's never been a promo guy. I do like it when a guy can actually cut a promo as have well. You, I've never seen his ECW promos, man. Come on. They won't let him do proper promos because they write him. He's, his vocabulary has been limited to whatever. Well, And he always cool. comes off sound like a stoner. You know, I don't have a problem with him being a stoner, but he, he really comes off when he talks. You can hear that he loves... Well, that was his original gimmick. Yeah. His original gimmick was RVD 420 says I just smoked your ass. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't mind him. Um, who do I want to see come back? Um, he wants to see John Laurinaitis come back. Oh, fuck no. I want that guy to die in his sleep. Choke, I don't, I don't choking, be painful. choking on his pillow while he's biting on it, you know? <laughs> um, hmm. You know, I love The Undertaker. If he was younger and healthier, I would love to see Undertaker come back because I am, I've am i always been an Undertaker fan ever since his debut in the WWE. Um, hell, I even went back and watched all of his old stuff from NWA and WCW when he was uh, the Punisher in Texas Red. And who else was he? He was Tom Mark. Uh, Mar mean Mark Calloway. He was Mark Callis. Yeah, mean Mark Callis, yes. Um, but um, if he was you know younger... What was that? Do you know who named him that? Um, I do, I just can't remember offhand. My understanding was that he was sitting there with Dusty Rhodes and Ole Anderson. And Ole said, well, you want, we want you to be mean, so we're going to call you mean Mark Callis, play on your name, Callaway. So, oh. but, um, let's see, this is, uh, basically the longer stream I've been able to cut doing it just, you know, just myself on here. Yeah, you're here too, but I mean like, uh, answering questions and everything. Who do you want to come back if you had to change to be, or a chance to, the chance to be GM or is it had to change? change. I think it's probably autocorrect. He's probably on a phone. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be Chance to be GM. Ah, oh, geez. You know what? There's so many guys out there that I would love to see come back. I don't know who I want to be. I, I'd love to see Kurt Angle back in the ring. Not as a GM, but as a, a performer. Um, hell, you know what? Haku's son. Tama Tonga. I would love to see him in the WWE. Uh, yeah. Who? Long come back. That way we can see everyone go one on one with the Undertaker. Yeah, no shit, eh? Um, <laughs> let's go one on one with the dead man, you know? Uh, uh, let's see. Who else would I want to come back? Ah, uh, geez. You know, I'd bring Adam Cole into NXT, I'd, uh, which he is supposed to be coming to GM. I mean, to uh, NXT, if you could be GM, what would you do? Oh. 
That's easy enough. You know what? You I have to tune in to filler to post. Yeah, actually, what do you do? tune in um, tomorrow. You'll see what Red's going to do as a GM, what he would do as GM for Raw. We already did a brand draft. I can actually write, uh, read this out to you since you're wa you're watching. We do have some live and attend attendance on the show, so I might as well do this. Now, Red is going to be covering Monday Night Raws, and he's starting his show off tomorrow. This is going to be his roster. He's going to have the Hardy Boys as a tag team, the Revival, Sheamus and Cesaro, the Club, the New Day. Uh, who else as tag team? Enzo and Cass. Enzo and Cass. And um, let's see, the Fashion Police. And I think that was yeah. it. Um, now, for singles competitors, he's going to have uh, former UK champion Tyler Bate, US champion Kevin Owens, Shinsuke Nakamura, Trent Seven from the UK, Charlotte Flair, Ember Moon, Kurt Angle as a competitor, uh, Finn Balor, Jack Gallagher, Wolfgang from the UK, Naomi, Dean Ambrose, Nia Jax, Mojo Rawley, Rusev, Hideo Itami, uh, Alicia Fox, Bailey, Paul Heyman as a general manager, Noam Dar from 205 Live, Jerry Lawler and Mauro Ranallo as commentators, and Jim Cornette as a uh, manager, I believe. Yep, for the revival. Now, SmackDown, which I will be taking care of. Smackdown, which I'll be taking care of, and that'll be next week's uh, um, Shooting from the Hip show, will be my tag teams are Authors of Pain, American Alpha, Heavy Machinery from NXT, The Ascension, DIY. Yes, they're not a team anymore, but I will be using them as a team because that's the way I drafted them. The Usos. Now, as singles competitors, I picked Aleister Black, also known as Tommy End, on the independent circuits, AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Alexa Bliss, Asuka, Bobby Roode, who is your NXT champion, Baron Corbin, Bray Wyatt, Bo Dallas, Sami Zayn, Becky Lynch, Nikki Cross, Killian Dane from NXT, Drew McIntyre from NXT, Sasha Banks, Curtis Axel, Billy Kay from NXT, Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, uh, Paul Ellering as a manager, James Mitchell as a manager, that was my fantasy pick, and Jim Ross and Booker T on the commentator's booth, and Lana as either a competitor or a Val A. Um, now, like I said, tomorrow you're going to hear what um, what Red Rainer is going to do with the Raw brand, what he would do in booking matches and so on and so forth, and I think you're also recording some matches um, yeah, I've been working on that, but it, it's... It's not going to be done? Uh, no, the thing is, I don't know if it's going to be done or not. As of right now, it's pretty laggy when I try to record them. Oh. And I've not run into that with any other games. Um, I might end up having to go back to, like, Nintendo 64 and making the characters on an N64 game or something. Yeah. Well, even if you can't have that happen, you can still say this is what uh, would happen in the match. Who would win? And uh, you know a yeah, story. So basically, folks. And the story. Right? Yeah. Who was the best manager? Who is the best Canadian wrestler? You know, it might go against a lot of people, um, but the best Canadian wrestler, in my opinion, has always been Chris Benoit. I don't care what he's done or if he did it, if he didn't do it, it's not my opinion. As a wrestler, that guy so was. That guy was the best Canadian wrestler of all time. He outdid Bret Hart and the Hart family. This guy had everything going for him. Too bad that was taken away and the whole story behind it. I'm not getting, even getting to it on the show. Um, but uh, as best can, Canadian wrestler, I would have to go with Chris Benoit. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Who's your favorite, Tim? Now, like I said... Uh, manager, though. Yes, you manager, too. Everybody. Oh, who was the best manager? Um, uh, is he a Canadian manager or just manager in 
manager. Just manager in general. I in WWE, I would have to go with Bobby the Brain Heenan. He had the mouth. He had the brains. He had the gimmick. Uh, he could make you hate him. He could make you laugh. He could do everything. Uh, yes, uh, the Hearts were involved in Benoit's training as well, but he was a uh, he was a man of many talents. He was trained out in Japan. He was trained by the Hearts. Um, he was trained in independent circuits here in uh, Canada. He was trained all over the world. The, the guy yeah, was well-rounded. Uh, when the student becomes the master. Exactly. Like, um, the guy, he was intense. I love that about him. Uh, if but, not him, I'm going to go ahead and say Kevin Sheen for modern day. Now, as a manager, Bobby the Brain Heenan in WWE, but if you want a dark, sinister guy... I love Paul Ellering when he was with the Road Warriors, but when I think of Dark and Sinister, I think of James Mitchell. I loved him as a manager. Um, you know, people could say, well, you know, there's Paul Bearer, but to me, Paul Bearer just, I would have rather have had Undertaker under the, the, uh, the, the command of James Mitchell than Paul Bearer. Oh my God. Yeah, no, James Mitchell... I don't know. He can made you, Mikey Whipper unbelievable as a wrestler. Yeah. Can you have? Could you imagine um, how much darker Undertaker's character could have gotten with the uh, with James Mitchell as his uh, basically his Man, manager? I don't, I don't know how much darker it can get than kidnapping the boss's daughter, even if it's on the boss's orders. That's just deep, dark. I don't like it. I didn't like it then. I was fourteen years old, and I thought, wow. This is this is the darkest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> I, I did love it when he uh, he started bringing in the crucifix and tying people up or shackling them to it and then lifting them up in the air. I did love that about it. What about Savage's manager? Um, are, you talking about, are you talking about Sherry or Elizabeth? That's what I want to know. Uh, Sherry is the one that was with Sherry. Yeah, and well, there's also major guns in WCW. Um, oh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, Medusa. Yeah. And uh, Gorgeous George. Not the Gorgeous George of the 60s, but Gorgeous George, the, the stripper. Yep. That they found at the strip club. You know the story behind that? Kevin Nash picked, found her at the strip club. Yeah. Yeah, I heard and, it all about uh, it. it. He was cheating on his wife with her. Yeah. And the whole story was, yeah, no, she's for the show. <laughs> yeah, I know. And he was booking the show at the time, so boom, Macho Man gets George's George. And then Macho and her, Macho and uh, George's George actually had a thing going on mine. Kevin now, Nash is back. It, it, and, Tim, if you're talking about Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elizabeth was never a manager. She was a valet. She never really got on the mic. Um, she was just there basically because she looked good. Um, and she was kind of like, um, Savage's little slave, you know, he tell her, uh, Miss, and he was, he was a little insecure in his real life. Exactly. So well, Miss, Miss, insecure, honestly. she was, if you ever listened to the, have you ever listened to Linda Hogan or Linda Balea talk about the things that went on? She had a, released a book a couple years ago. Yeah, but believing a lot of what comes out of that bitch's mouth is hard to believe. Well, I, I find it more believable than her husband sometimes. He's true, true, true. Um, let's see. Now, explain, like uh, like I was trying to tell you, even if you can't do the matches in a video, uh, you can say who won, and if there's a storyline going to be building up for that match, kind of let us in what that storyline's going to be. Yeah, I'm going to let you know the finish as yeah. we had talked about previously. Yeah. So basically, who goes over who, how they win, um, their finishing move, and um, and yes, she was eye candy, Tim. Um, actually, I thought she looked better as she got a little bit on the older side. When she was in yeah. WCW, she looked a lot better than she did when she was back in, in WWE. Um, You're what, nine years older than me? Yeah. So you would have been like 21 at that point. Something like that. Yeah, no, I'm sitting there. I was, I was, you know, 13, 12, 13 at the time, I think. When she, you know, WCW, when she finally came there. But, you know, she looked better then. She was oh. like a completely different person. And then 
like ninety nine, you could see the drug use that hit her hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, it looked like she was she became more confident in herself in WCW um after she left uh, Macho Man. And yeah. um obviously she had the boob job and uh but she did her hair a lot hair. different. She did her hair a lot different. She uh, she held herself a little bit better, you know. And then as the years went on, you could see she was getting into the drug use, and and she just started deteriorating from there. And have you seen Lex Luger? Oh my God! Wow, what a change in a man! Holy fuck! From the Lex Express to the shriveled up, what is he wheelchair bound? Yeah, then, like this guy is fucking just unbelievably changed. He's on some kind of medication, or he was, and he was addicted to it, and it ate away at his bones and his hips. Mm. Now there's a rumor coming out, or there's a rumor out about that Hulk Hogan's coming back to WWE. Yeah, if that happens, it'll be SummerSlam. It's supposed to be like in a couple of weeks. Yeah, Lex Luger is in a wheelchair right now. Yes, he is. He is, uh, um, if, if you remember his, his look before, um, WCW went under, you would be surprised with what he looks like now. The guy is very, uh, he's wasted away. He's wasted away big time. But, uh, yeah, Hulk Hogan is supposed to be coming back. I believe I read in a couple of weeks. Um, so it could be at, um, Extreme Rules. Time for all the outdated things to happen at Great Balls of Fire. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, his balls are always on fire because he's dipping it in the wrong fucking cunt. <laughs> um, now, so you have everything worked out for your show tomorrow. How you would book Raw. Yeah, I remember we were going to film the... the well, besides that. On live since we're going to... Else is gonna, are you running the show or is he just talking? Um, I'm going to open the show, I believe, and uh, he's going to be sitting in. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about it, man. He's a cool guy. You'll get to know him pretty well, damn quickly. I was saying at all. I was saying uh, I got to film. I've been working on filming my promos. Yeah. But I can do them live if you prefer. Yeah, I would actually... Well, if you want to record them, I, I don't really care. But uh, if you want to cut them live... Um, I know uh, for next week, um, all the promos and stuff, he's going to cut live for me. I'm putting everything together and he's going to do the... He's going to be the voice. The voice of madness. Uh, was that due to drugs? Because he's in a wheelchair. Yes, he, is, uh, he was on a lot of drugs. Um, plus hip replacements and stuff like that. Lex Luger's body is completely shot. And obviously when they get to that point, you know, and, and everything, they find religion, as always. So he's really... Well, well, you know what they say, and when nobody else wants to talk to you, talk to God. Well, see me, I'm not, I'm not into Bible thumpers. I'm not religious of, uh, you know, at all. Um... Either, but that's not my point. My no. point is that, uh, you know, that's what they have to, that's what they do. Yeah. You know? I actually, um, I, I met Tim actually at the hospital here in, in where I live. Um, and, uh, I met his, I believe it's his uncle or his, um, geez, his grandfather maybe, uh, Rick. Rick Blackmore, I met him. The first time I met this guy is like um, running into an old friend you hadn't seen in like 15 years or so. And we sat there for like three hours just shooting the breeze. I, I, I you know, we came, became instant best friends right away. Um, Rick uh, Blackmore was a pretty awesome guy and uh, just want to say sorry for his passing and, uh, you know, He's a, he's a pretty wicked guy, man. Love talking to him. Um, now, I've got big things planned for next week's um, shooting from the hip. Oh, it's your dad. Oh, I'm so sorry, bro. Um, I thought it was like your uncle or your... Um... 
he lost me again, but I got to finish up. So, okay. But yeah, I'm going to finish up as well. We've been going for an hour and 19 minutes. Um, now, thanks for joining me tonight. It was nice. Um, thanks for all the questions there, Tim. It was good to keep you informed. I, it seems like you're a little bit behind on some of the news that's going on in the wrestling world. But um, it's much appreciated that you tuned in. Please share out the uh, video link. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, like the video. And uh, continue to follow what happens on uh, Pillar to Post here on YouTube.com. Uh, you can also find me on Vidme. And it's vid.me backslash pillar number two post. Um, no, no, I thought you were talking about at the hospital. Oh. Oh, yeah, I met your dad there as well. No, no, I was talking about, uh, I believe, your uncle, uh, Rick. But, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good night. Sure, we only had three um, watching, but uh, you know what? I, I like doing this for fun. It uh, keeps me busy. And um, like I said, next week, a whole new setting. I'm building that studio in the basement. You're going to have a completely back, uh, new background instead of the washer and dryer with all the laundry stuff behind me and the freezer at my side trapped me in here. Okay, it was your uncle that passed away. Thanks for letting me know, buddy. Uh, he was a good man. I love talking with the guy. Uh, so you guys all have a good night. Thank you, Heavyweight Mark, for calling in and uh, joining me on the air. And uh, next week, I will be taking phone calls on Skype. I will be giving my Skype name so that way you guys can contact me on Skype. And I'll be taking calls through Skype if Skype's being a nice bitch instead of the nasty bitch it likes to be. So you guys all have a good night. Thank you for joining me once again. And um, I might have a few more glasses of wine before passing out tonight. So you guys have a good one. Join me tomorrow for Shooting from the Hip at 8 p.m. with Red Rainer as my co-host. And the man known as the Nightmare. I know him as Sin. Let's see what you guys think of him when you guys see him. See you guys uh, tomorrow. <laughs>